Hi everyone, welcome to Sea Airspace 2023 just outside Washington DC. It is the largest maritime expo in the US. Let's get on the show floor to see what's new. We start today's video report with Archer Grumman, who's showcasing two missiles, including a, a new one, uh, being showcased for the first time here at Sierra Space. So at the top is the Argum ER, uh, that's uh, the new variant of the Argum uh, anti-radiation missile. This is uh, meant to destroy enemy radars. And under it is a new maritime strike missile. So uh, discussing with uh, Natural Grumman uh, subject matter experts. They were pretty vague, but they told us this is a very fast missile that can go very far. And it's designed for maritime strikes. So it can strike uh, surface ships as well as uh, land targets. Judging by the shape, like it's an air breathing missile. So very fast, it's potentially uh, hypersonic. They didn't share any data with us in terms of range or speed. Uh, to me, my understanding is it looks very much like what uh, Halo should be. Uh, however, uh, as you all know, uh, NAPSI announced uh, the selection of uh, two other companies for Halo, the next generation hypersonic missile uh, for the US Navy to be launched from aircraft. So the first one is Lockheed Martin, the other one is Raytheon. Uh, Natural government told us that moving forward, uh, probably they would look at reducing the footprint of this maritime strike missile so that it would be closer in size to the Argum ER. Judging by the shape of the two missiles, they are fairly similar. And uh, the advantage of Argum ER is that it can fit inside the weapon bay of F 45 aircraft, F 45C of the, the US Navy. Speaking of Halo, I had an exclusive interview with Rear Admiral Ted Ford, PO UNW, uh, regarding the program that's been awarded last week. So Halo is our hypersonic anti-surface warfare OSW increment 2. Um, hypersonic is a slight misnomer because although hypersonic typically means higher than Mach 5, we're more concerned about closing long range at time. If it achieves at Mach 5, that's fine, but that's not a critical KPP that we're going after. The challenge here is being able to do a hypersonic strike that's launched off of an F-18 coming from an aircraft carrier. So to date, we've done a lot of advances with the Air Force and DARPA um, that have taken hypersonics, whether it's scramjet or ramjet technology. And what we've learned about how to get into that, that space for hypersonics, but it's all been very large missiles because of the boosting capability you need to get up and into the hypersonic realm. When you want to do that on an aircraft carrier, you've got limits on how long it can be just to be on the elevators uh, and move around the flight deck. And of course, there's a limit on, on what can be carried on the F-18 itself for both catapult and a recovery. So that becomes the technological challenge. It's not the hypersonics itself, it's how can you package it into a weapon form that will fit on the F-18. This program, the award that we just gave to Lockheed Martin Raytheon is phase one, and it'll take both of those companies through a preliminary design review competition that's uh, right now scheduled to run until December of 24. We are now in the Thales stand. The company is showcasing for the first time in the United States the new Sono Flash Sono Buoy. It's a dual mode Sono Buoy, so both active and passive. Uh, it's currently being tested by the French uh, DGA uh, in a French lake in, uh, in southern France. It's being showcased next to the Captas 4 viral death sonar be right behind me. So we covered it at SNA in January. That's the new uh, VDS for the Constellation class frigate, the future frigate of the US Navy. Both systems are being showcased together because it's a family of systems. 
So the Sono Flash along with the a ALFS dipping sonar deployed from the MH60 Romeos and the CAPTAS-4 can conduct uh, multi-static uh, anti-submarine warfare operations. Uh, Thales is also showcasing a new synthetic aperture sonar for uh, mine warfare, if you follow me. So this is a new synthetic aperture sonar by Thales named uh, Samdis NG for next generation. It's based on the existing Samdis, except it brings uh, better performances in a smaller footprint. Uh, so basically it can be fitted on smaller UUVs, uh, like 12 inch class of UUVs. Samdis is uh, already selected for the French-British uh, SLAM F MMCM uh, mine warfare program. Uh, so it's currently fitted on the uh, A27 UUV in France. It's a pretty big UUV, and uh, France needed a, a smaller payload in order to fit on smaller UUVs such as the A18M by uh, Excel. So uh, here in the US, it could probably fit on a smaller uh, Bluefin and Remus uh, UUVs. It brings better performances because the original SAMDIS, legacy SAMDIS, uh, could dive down to 300 meters of depth and uh, the new one can go down uh, to 600 meters. Otherwise, the performance is the same in terms of uh, mine uh, detection. The key feature of the SAMDIS is uh, its uh, multi-aspect mode, meaning like in one pass, the sonar has uh, three field of views, which you can see here, one, two, three. So in a single path, basically, you get three angles of the mine-like object. That way it's easier to classify the object as a, as a mine or not. All right, Steve, what is uh, G. Maring announcing this morning at CR Space 2023? Yeah, so the big news uh, t today is that over the weekend, uh, the U.S. Navy commissioned the LCS-32 Santa Barbara and what's significant about that commissioning is that it's the Navy's first ship in which uh, a GE Marine lightweight composite enclosure is, is installed. Uh, so the big benefits of this new module and enclosure is that com when you compare it to its steel enclosure counterpart, uh, it provides a safer working environment for the sailors and it gives added flexibility because of its lightweight to ship designers and naval architects. There's, there's a lot of demand for this, for these benefits. Uh, you know, real quick, just to touch on why it's it's important to the Navy and the sailor is that uh, in an engine room, which is typically loud and, and hot, uh, there's significantly less heat, about 25 to 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, less heat rejected into the engine room, about 60% less noise coming from the engine. Uh, and then it's also composite, so there's no not the maintenance you would have with steel, and there's improved access for, for the sailors. So. With the U.S. Navy, this is the uh, the same composite enclosure that's going to be installed aboard the FFG-62 Constellation class. It's also going to be installed aboard uh, the Flight 3 uh, Arleigh Burke destroyers. And then internationally, uh, the Finnish uh, uh, Corvette, Pajama class Corvette, is going to install these. And there are some additional uh, international programs that I'll be able to tell you more about later this year that will also be installing these as they convert away from steel because of the benefits. We are now with Raytheon, who just received last week a new contract award for the Spy 6 radar. Scott, great to see you again. Good to see you as well. Can you please uh, tell us more about this uh, contract award last week? Yes, so we got a contract award for the second option year for the hardware production and support contract for Spy 6. That includes the first Spy 6 V4 for the uh, DDG-1 uh, uh, Flight 2A ships. Uh, so that's the so-called uh, Flight 2 Alpha rebuild, is that correct? Yeah, the, the backfit ships, correct. Do we have any idea which, uh, which is the first Flight 2 Alpha ship that's going to get uh, the upgrade? DDG-91 uh, USS Pinckney, Pinckney will get the first uh, backfit. All the capabilities of uh, SPY-6 will be on the backfit ship. So everything that is on the, the DDG uh, Flight 3 ships will be on the, the Flight 2A ships as well. Just a little bit smaller aperture, 24 RMAs per, per array phase versus 37 RMAs for the larger ships. So ballistic missile defense, integrated air and missile defense? Integrated air and missile defense capabilities, uh, tracking ballistic missile targets, uh, air breathing targets, et cetera. All right, Scott, thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much.